Hey guys, Deanna here with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. Support for Label Free Podcast is brought to you by Impression Derma, who has experienced increased exposure to HEV light over the last year and a half. I know I have. If you don't know what HEV light is, let me educate you. HEV light is emitted from your phone, tablet, and computer that penetrates deep into the skin, which can lead to wrinkles and increased harm, leaving permanent damage. I have found a solution that protects you from those harmful lights. Let me introduce you to Impression Derma, let's face it. This product will increase collagen, promote hydration, improve elasticity, halt premature aging, and shield against those free radicals all by using these key ingredients. Algae, buriti oil, bamboo extract, raspberry seed oil, bloom light, plus many others that are sustainably sourced and produced as well as ethically traded. Please head to impressionderma.com and use code labelfree20 for 20% off. Again, please head to impressionderma.com and use code labelfree20 for 20% off. What is good, everyone? This is your host, Deanna Kempel of Label Free Podcast. To live your best life. You must live label free. I'm super excited. I have a very special guest. She is a certified tarot uh, master, a psychic medium and author, and a past life specialist. Please welcome Corby Mitleid. Corby, thank you for joining us today. Can you please tell the audience a little bit about your background? It's great to be here. All right, let me give you the 30 second <laughs> elevator speech. <laughs> All right. Not interested it. in metaphysics when I was nine, read a book called The Witch Family and said, cool, I want some of that. Uh, fast forward to 1973 when I was a senior in high school. And yes, that tells you how old I am. Uh, that was the year Live and Let Die came out. So Spencer's had the James Bond 007 tarot deck and I bought it because we were all hippies then, you know, everyone had a deck. Five years later, everyone else had moved on to roller skates, disco balls. I was still reading the cards. I was fascinated by them. Yeah. So for 20 years, I read for friends, learning to keep my ego on the shelf, clear messages. All of a sudden in 1994, I could talk to dead people and do hands-on healing. And that's when the universe handed me my draft notice and said, oh, you're working for me. Wow. Did it part-time with lots of other jobs until 9-11. Uh, when the towers burned, I looked at my husband and I said, I need to do this work full time. People need to know there are other answers out there. He said, I believe in you, go do it. So for a year, I still worked 70 hours a week as an executive recruiter, did the psychic work evenings and weekends. Once I knew I could make a living at it, closed the door on corporate and have never looked back. So it's been 20 years. I read about a thousand people a year. I work six days a week and I get to get up in the morning. I don't have to get up in the morning. I That's love that. I love that. Um, <clears throat> so I've never really done, uh, the tarot read. I think I've gotten a tarot card reading once and mm -hmm. it, I mean, that was many, many years ago. I don't even remember what that was all about. So when you, out of, just out of curiosity, how often yeah. do you find out the thing, the, the, what you read for your clients actually comes true for them? Well, um, that's assuming that I'm a fortune teller, which I'm not. Um, what I do is I show them here are your opportunities and how to grab them. Okay. Here's the tough stuff. Here's how to get through it around it. Here's your toolbox. Go rock and roll. Here's your example. Okay. If you said to me, I want to open up a vintage clothing store, I wouldn't flip a couple of cards and say, wait until November and fire the redhead. Be a card for you, a card for the energy around the business, a card for the brick and mortar location to look for, yeah. marketing, clients, competition, staff, finances, what you need to know, best possible outcome. All of these make things possible. It's empowering. Right. But yes, one of the funniest stories I have about that is in Canada, I read for someone and I saw there is some possible difficulties coming down the pike and she didn't like it. She gets up. She says, you suck. She walks away. Fine. She's the first person back in my chair the next time I'm there. And she said, last time you told me that I might want to take it a border and then I might find a reason to sell my house. And I thought that was all bull. But then my daughter got pregnant and moved home. And now I want to sell my house to raise my grandson. And I still don't like you, but I want to know what else you say. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> wow. That's, a, that's a, no. amazing. Do you ever yeah. get, see some, so I'll, I don't know a lot about it. Do you ever see some? No, ask about, any question you want. Do you ever see some things with the cards that you are, that makes you uncomfortable that you don't want to tell your clients? No, because everyone says, do you see bad things? What I see are challenges. Okay. I mean, I'm a three-time cancer dancer myself. If I get a sense that there is something difficult coming down the road, I won't say, 
you're going to get stomach cancer and it'll be three years before you get rid of it. Right. I might say, see a gray area around your digestive, probably go see your doc, go to get it checked out. Yeah. yeah. Because even the best of us are only 85% accurate. The only one 100% accurate is God and he doesn't do readings at psychic fairs. I mean, I remember when Sylvia Brown, oh, the great Sylvia Brown told a woman on what, Montel Williams, that her daughter was dead because she hadn't sp spoken to her daughter in years. Daughter came back three years later. Wow. What did that do? Oh, so, so much damage. Yes. So I make a practice of if there is something that you can deal with, fine. An example of that, I did see a gray area in the lungs for one guy. I said, go get it checked. Five years later, the woman, the wife comes back to me and says, we are so grateful that you gave us that notice. Because yeah. we went to the doctor and what we found out is it was the very beginnings of ALS. That's Lou Gehrig's disease. Okay. Uh, but he had four really great years before he died because we caught it so early. Thank you. You gave us four years of our marriage. Wow. I didn't do it. I'm just the tube it came through. Yeah. But that's an example of, I'll give you the heads up, but it's up to you to follow. Sure. Now you mentioned God. Now I'm just curious. Do you believe yeah. in God? Are you kidding? You think that I cured myself of cancer all by my little onesies? <laughs> I do this in service. Like okay. I say, the universe, spirit, Ralph the Wonder Dog, whatever you believe, said, people need you to do this. This is not to show people my aura don't stink. Yeah. This is to help. And the way I explain it to people is, I don't care if you're Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Muslim, pagan, or believe in Ralph the Wonder Dog. All I ask is, you know, something up there loves you wants the best for you and is willing to work with you yeah i i am not an atheist man okay i, I just can't well, I just that interesting. too much because i think a lot of people have the impression that someone that does tarot card readings or along those lines might not believe in a higher pop well in in god what about acts chapter two these things and greater can you do yeah you know yeah so if you believe in the new testament and you hear that why can I not do what I do right. with the understanding I'm doing it in service? Yeah, no, I totally agree. I'm just asking the question because I'm sure a lot of people do. Oh, that. I know that you're asking not only for you, but so that your audience can learn, Yeah, which is why, A, I'm never offended by these questions and B, I give as clear an answer as I can. Sure. Because if they understand about me, then that may also help them understand about other psychics. Yes, I, I agree. And so that, that's like my curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. so tell us about the past as a past life specialist. When did you realize that you had that talent and what does that look like for your client? Well, um, I had picked up a couple of my own past lives, but when I started working for Robert Schwartz, he's written a great series on life between lives and pre-birth planning, your soul's plan, your soul's gift and your soul's love. He believes understands that karma is not carrot and stick karma is five things unbalanced energy okay. healing service contrast and healing of beliefs so if you have a situation and you keep bumping up against something it could be that it is part of your pre-birth planning from a past life for instance yeah um we had a client that um, was born into a Jewish family, never understood why, never felt right there, even though it was, you know, everyone else thought it was perfectly normal. We found out that two lives ago, she was uh, a pilot in World War I. And in Germany, it wasn't as bad as World War II, but Jews were still considered other. Okay. So how better to understand being, you know, Catholic and thinking Jews are other than to put you in a Jewish life. That's right. an example. Yeah. And I also love it because going with the pre-birth uh, pre planning idea, a lot of people would say, oh, Corby's had cancer three times. She must've been really bad. Mm -mm. The example I use, do you remember Ryan White? That was the kid in the late eighties and early nineties. He was 18 years old. He got AIDS from a blood transfusion. Yes. And everybody treated him like a pariah and bullied yeah. him and the family was a mess. But then they made friends with Elton John. Now, at that point, Elton was drinking and drunk, drinking and drugging okay. and dry, life into the ground. 
but he was so moved by Ryan and his family, he became their dear friends, sang at Ryan's funeral and Ryan influenced him to get off the drink and the drugs. He's been more than 30 years clean and start the Elton John AIDS Foundation, which has raised half a billion dollars for AIDS and HIV research worldwide. Wow. To me, in his pre-birth session, Ryan probably said, I want a life of service. It'll be short, it'll be tough, but look what happens if I do that. Yeah. So I consider him a courageous soul. Yeah. That's interesting. I like I like that point of view. And I think I, I would agree with that. Um, that's pretty amazing. I didn't I didn't know that about Elton John. <clears throat> yes. I do yes. remember that story vaguely, but that's uh that's pretty powerful. You know, so he came. He, you know, he had something that was unfortunate happened to him and his, that, that what happened to him impacted the world, like huge. It did. You know, it, that, how it many, really did. So you're, so you're a psychic medium and, and an author. Yep. So t- tell us about what books you've written. Okay. I've written three. Okay. Two of them have a psychic twist. One of them is, is self-help. So the self-help book came first and that's clean out your life closet. Um, clarity, adaptability, simplicity, and making friends with stress. But the point of the book is I tell you, you've got your own answers. Yeah. Because I mean, how many of us have gone to Barnes and Noble and we see this great cover and a sexy title and we read a couple of pages, looks like it's really good. Yeah. And we bring it home and we say, what do you mean I can't eat food with leptin and I have to go at 4 a.m. every morning for yoga? I live in Milwaukee. I've got two preschool kids and I have a job. It's not happening. My whole idea is in each chapter, here's some of the dumb things I did. Here's a client example. Here are some things to think about. But at the end of each chapter, you've got the adventure pages where I ask you questions based on your life. So you can't look at the book and say, what did she say on page 57? Right. You have to look Mm -hmm. at your own. By the end of that book, that becomes your personal manual for how to make your life better. What is good, everyone? Deanna here with Label Free Podcast. Autumn is in the air, the pumpkins are in the patch, and our friends at Manscaped are here to make sure your man doesn't carve his pants, pumpkins, when he's grooming, if you know what I mean. Make sure he's keeping things fresh as fall with the leaders in male grooming and their brand new fourth edition performance package. Ladies, do we really want to cuddle up with a dude who isn't trimmed? I know I don't. My man's keeping it tight. Get him to take the leap into fall with Manscaped. Help him join the two million men worldwide using Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code LABELFREE20. Again, go to manscaped.com and use the code LABELFREE20 for 20% off and free shipping. Can you give us an example in the book of how you help make life, people's lives better? Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the things that we do a lot of is we, we collect things. Yeah. Whether we're collector peoples, that is the ginger ninja. <laughs> that's uh, harley harley don't jump on thank you very much oh uh, we both got animals going on here that's yes awesome. we do yes we do um you've got um collector people you know depression glass disney stuffed animals whatever yeah you've got in the book i call it rolodex people most people will not know what that is anymore um but that's the people who collect people yeah then there are the been there done that people They have to go to all the Grateful Dead concerts, or they have to always be the first ones in a new restaurant. And then there are people who do experiences. Okay. They work at um, Catholic charities for the day when people come in. And it is the connection with people. It's the generosity. It's it's the heart work. So here are some adventure pages. Of the four kinds of people in this chapter, which are you? What does being that kind of person bring to your life? Which of the four kinds of people do you like to have in your life? Why? What did you learn through the sunset of your life visualization, which was an exercise I did in here? Notice it's all from your experiences. Sure. So and like get, so, like you said, you get to answer your own your own questions, and you realize yeah. how much you know about yourself. We're told from kidhood, "Go ask the experts; you don't know enough." Yeah, it's one of the the reasons that people are so unsure of themselves now. Now that doesn't mean that experts are not appropriate, right? 
um, you know, doctors are smart. Um, and uh, you, come uh, from a, fine you come from a seemed, family of a bunch of medical people too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dad was a cardiologist. My brother is world famous uh, researcher and doctor for cystic fibrosis and asthma. And mom wow. was a nurse. So I have seen all of the good things that yeah. medicine can bring you. Yeah. Okay. Um, but if we don't look inside ourselves, then we're not growing. Yes. We're not internalizing the lessons. I tell you. So that's, that's that book. Okay. The next one I, I wrote because of, of an incident that I saw in Toronto years ago, 250 booth psychic there. And there was someone across the way, she's what I call the fake gypsies. Okay. You know, you could put on the jingling jewelry right. and the skirt and do the bad acts that you could be a gypsy. So there was a woman walking down the aisle, looking at the booths and the fake gypsy runs out, grabs her arm. Now in psychic show parlance, that's called hooking. And it's as bad as the other kind of hooking. Okay. <laughs> but we hear her say, oh, you no need to pay 30, 40, $50. I do jump on for 10. Come. Drags the woman behind a screen like this. Okay. 15 minutes later, a bunch of us see the client leaving, crying hysterically. And a bunch of us you know, rush over. Are you all right? Yeah. Well, the gypsy had said she had a family curse. And if she didn't burn 400 specially blessed candles at the Roman Catholic Church and the gypsy would bless for $1 a candle, her entire family, you know, dead. And oh, the woman bought it. That's so terrible. this like, book, what a scam. I know, notice it says how to find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkeys. Yes. So this book is specifically for people who really would like to use intuitive counseling, but they don't want to learn how to, they don't need psychic development. Can you just they need to learn how. Can you, can you say the title of the book really quick? Yes, it's called "The Psychic Yellow Brick Road." Okay, how to find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkeys. Cool. Um, the the back title says, "Good psychic guidance is art. Right, don't settle for a forgery." Yeah, and even if you never come to me, if that book helps you, then I've done my job. The thing that I had noticed is there is our books out there but all of them had a way of saying that the author was the only good psychic you could trust so you have to go to her it's not the deal there are nine billion people in the world i can't read them all yeah. no i want there to be other good psychics thank you yeah so and the other thing that pleased me enormously is a lot of psychics read it and said god i wish i'd had this when i was starting out i'd know what to expect oh wow that's that's a great compliment to you it was, it was. Um, and the third book I wrote was because I did 45 weekends a year on the road, 50,000 miles a year on my car. My friends nicknamed me the Travel Channel. And then <laughs> in the summer of ni uh, 19, my back went out. Oh, A pinched sorry. nerve, herniated disc, forget it. Yeah. It was okay by November, but the doctor said, you are toast. You are not going to be able to load in and load out. And you're not going to be able to be 10 hours in the car yeah that's so true. but that was the universe taking care of me because i had from november to the following march i put all of my business online and what happened in march 2020 the beginning of the year of murder hornet bingo and hold my beer <laughs> now all of my friends <laughs> that still did the circuit their business tanked yeah i actually did better last year than i had done on the road so i said great but there's so much I learned yeah. and there is no book out there that gives you an idea of how to make this work that I wrote. You've got the magic who needs a genie, the A-lister's guide to holistic expo success. So if you are a reader, if you're a vendor for holistic products, if you're a healer, Reiki, anything like that, this is a book that shows you how to as I put it, stand on the twin mountains of good business practice sure. and wiki woo. And I give you absolutely every secret that I had. <clears throat> there are things in the back like why sign up sheets and um, my job description for a front person and all of that. Because the better you look and the more professional you look, the better we all look. Yes, for sure. So, um, so where can people find those books? Oh, Amazon, of course. Amazon. Um, all of them are hard copy, you know, paperback yeah. and Kindle. Clean Out Your Life Closet, I actually also did as an audio book because oh, cool. for me, um, 
well, I've had theater training. You know, yeah. my, my voice is good for that. And the book was the kind of book that if you know that the author is reading it to you, all of the passion and belief that they have in those words comes across. So I take it that's your favorite book that you've written. Um, actually, I would love to be able to do all of them as audiobooks. Yeah. Okay. But Life Closet cost me six grand. And that oh, was boy. <laughs> back in 2017. So it's going to be a little while. But there is that possibility. Yes. Yeah. Was- and right now, the next book is going to be one that I am working on with uh, a 14-year-old brilliant, brilliant reader that I've taken on as an apprentice. And we've read a lot of books, you know, Teen Witch, Teen Psychic, and it doesn't really speak to teenagers except through an adult voice. Right. So we are going to partner on this book. Oh, nice. And it'll be both myself and a 14-year-old talking to teens that want to start listening to themselves intuitively, finding out how to work with metaphysics safely. I, I love that. I think that's great. Um, what, what, I have a question in regards to yeah. listening to your intuition. How important is it that we tap into our intuition and learn to trust our, ourselves? It goes right back to the, you know, you have to ask the experts. If we learn to trust our intuition, we start to do what we need to do for ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are times when I'm planning to do something. And upstairs, as I put it, puts the kibosh on it. Um, looking at, at my back injury, I didn't argue with upstairs or the doctors. Yeah, That's called living the examined life. Hmm. I looked at what happened. I wasn't keen on it, but I accepted it did. I found reasons to be okay with it. Me personally, I then usually will find a reason to teach with it. And yeah. then the magic word is next. Yeah. I like that. You don't live your life over and over and over again with a coulda, woulda, shouldas. Right. I, I agree. I agree with that. You just got to keep moving forward. And, you know, I, I'm pretty intuitive and I, I tend to listen to myself and just trust. And I just trust in the universe, trust in God. And just, you know, I have just have mm-hmm. living faith. Um, where can people reach out to you, find you, contact you? What would be the best way? Oh, well, they can't avoid me. <laughs> the, the first thing, of course, is my website, corbymidline.com. There are like 150 articles on there for you. It's how to make um, an appointment with me. It's the gateway to getting my books and sign up for my newsletter. You Perfect. can always find me on Facebook, Fire Through Spirit, and then Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, all Corby Midline. Oh, very cool. Um, I'm going to put all those links in the show notes, you guys. So if you're interested in reaching out to Corby for a, a tarot reading, for a past life special, past life in, information, or for her books, please don't hesitate to reach out. As you can tell, she's very lovely and great to talk to. So uh, make sure you click on those links and, and uh, go find her. Before, before I wrap up the show, I always like to ask my, my guests if they have any last words of wisdom or advice for the audience. I know we talked about a, a lot of different things. Is there any, any last piece of information you'd like to leave with them? Well, I'm going to give them what I call my sentence of passion. It's my rallying cry of the world. Might work for you. Cross the bridge from fear to fearlessness and fly. When you think you can't get from here, try. When you think that you need a flight plan and a license to fly your wings, go anyway. Because while we're waiting for permission, other people can be on their lives and we can be waiting forever. Do what you know feeds your heart. Love it. Yes. Do what you know that feeds your heart every day. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Corby, for being a guest today. It was an absolute pleasure. Please keep us informed on any new projects that you have coming up so we can get an update from you and share it with the audience. You guys, this is your host, Deanna Kempel with Label Free Podcast. To live your best life, you must live label free. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share, follow, all those good things. And I'll be back soon with more dynamic guests.